welcome back to the channel so in this video we are going to solve the sql interview question and this was asked in meta uh, and uh, this problem is a hard category problem this problem can be found on strata scratch website and uh, the name of the problem is retention rate okay so in this problem we can see we have been given three columns uh, and uh, there is only one table and in the output also we have only one table so this is the output this is the input so in the input table we have a record date account id and the user id so let's see uh, the problem statement and understand what exactly these column means so this is the problem basically you are given a data set that track user activity the data set include the information about the date of the user activity the account id associated with the activity and the user id of the user performing the activity each row in the data set represent the user activity on the specific date for a particular account okay so here we can see we have been given a date on which the activity was performed and that activity is belonging to which uh, account id and which user has uh, performed that activity so this is the information which we have been given so here if you see we have the record i think from 2020 and uh, we have i think three distinct uh, account id a1 a2 and a3 and in the user id i think we have the range from uh, u1 to u8 so let's uh, write over here so here we have 2022 2021 data and here we have a1 to a3 and here we have u1 to uh, u8 right now the task is to calculate the monthly retention rate for the users for each account id for december 2020 and uh, uh, january 2021 okay so we need to calculate basically the retention rate of january 2021 and december 2020 now we need to understand what exactly the retention rate is right uh, here they have explained the retention rate is defined as the percentage of the user active in the given month who have the activity in the future month okay so let's say if a user u1 is there uh, this user has the activity in december 2020 and the same user has the activity in january uh, 2021 then we can say that the user is retained for december 2020 right and in the same way, like this user has the activity in let's say July 2021, right? Then also this user is retained. Why? Because here it is mentioned not the consecutive month. It's like uh, in like um, in future, if we have the activity for any of the user in any of the account, then that user we can say that the uh, that user is uh, retained for that particular month, right? So that is how uh, we found uh or we we will be calculating this retention rate right so here they have explained for instance a user is considered retained for december 2020 if they have the activity in december 2020 and any subsequent month january or later january 2021 or later the same i explained over here similarly a user is retained for january 2021 if they have the activity in january 2021 and any later month that is february or later right so let's say if the user u2 is there under the account uh, a3 and this user has the activity in uh, january 21 and this user uh, if we see any activity in uh, future month let's say in the march uh, 21 then we can say that this user is retained for um, january 2021 the final output should include the account id and the ratio of the retention rate um, in January 2021 uh, to the retention rate in December 2020 uh, for, for each account ID. Okay, so here we saw we have three accounts. So basically, uh, the final output would look like uh, this. So here we have the account ID A1, A2, A3. For each account, basically, we need to find. find. So we will find December. Uh, December 2020 retention rate. Let's say this is X, this is Y, this is Z, and in the same way, uh, account ID for 
uh, January 2021, right? Here we have A1, A2, A3, and this has, let's say, A, B, and C. So how the final output would look like is, we will uh, have to create only one table, that is account ID, and this will be the retention rate. This retention rate is nothing but the January 2021 divided by December 2020, right? This is what is mentioned over here. The ratio of the retention rate in January 2021 and December 2020, right? So what we will do is we will find about two table and then we will join these two. So here we will have A1, A2, A3. And so this, this will look like A divided by X b divided by y and z divided by uh, c so this is how we will find the final output now our aim is to find this table how we will find this so if you see this uh, for each and every user uh, their activities can be any month in the future right so what we can do is to approach this problem let's write the approach over here Okay, approach. First, for each and every user, we will find the man, what is the latest activity for each user. So, latest activity, activity for each user. First, we will find this. And uh, the second is, uh, for each user, we have the latest activity. Now, if you see, we have two different things that is December 2020 data and December 2021 data. So we will find the distinct users in uh, 2020 and 2021, right? Under each account, under each account. So this is step three. Now we will see which all user which are there in 2020 has the activity, uh, latest activity greater to that. So let's say if user U1 is there and uh, this user is a part of 2020 and this user has the activity um, in 2021, then we can say that this user is retained for 2020, right? Same way we will do for 2021. Once we do this, then we will be able to find this table, basically this table and this table. And once we have this T1 and T2, then what we can do, we can simply join these two table to find uh, to get the final output right so this is this will be our approach uh, so the fourth step will be uh, here we will find the that table for 2021 and then we will join and uh, div divide uh, 2021 divided by 2020 basically the retention rate division right so this is how our approach would be now let's understand over here uh, by taking one example. So here if you see this account A1 has the user U1. This user uh, activity date if you see like uh, December 2020 and the same user has the activity in January 2021, right? So can we say that the user one is retained for 2020 December? Yes, we can say. Now the same user has the activity in February uh 2021 also right can we say that the user one is retained for 2021 january also right we can say right so the user one uh let's uh, let's assume that this uh, account one has only one user right but in this uh, example we have multiple user but let's assume only one user is there so the retention rate for account a1 will be what one user here, one user here. So one divided by one. Uh, retention rate would be one, right? So this is how we will calculate uh, the retention rate for uh, each and every uh, account, right? Now let's go to the uh, in Dweaver and uh, write the code for the same. Okay. So now we are in the Dweaver. So this create statement I will provide in the description section. You can basically run this command in any of the uh, SQL editor and uh, you can solve this problem, right? So this is the input basically. You can see we have 23 record. And now uh, as we discuss the approach, the same uh, uh, we will see over here in the code also. So the first, um, 
step is finding the latest activity. How we will find the latest activity for each user? We know each user is a part of the account ID, right? So we will group the data on the account ID and the user ID and find the latest activity, right? So we have done this and now let's see how the data look like. I will just explain the how the data look like over here after each step because if I write the code line by line then uh, the video will be quite longer. Okay. So for each user, uh, we saw right a total we had eight users. So let's order this data. So order by um, user ID and run this. Okay. So here if you see account one has three user u1 u2 u3 and uh, each user has the latest activity right same for account two and account uh three i think account a1 has four user uh u1 u2 u3 and u8 right so for each user we have the latest activity now uh, let's comment this so our next step was to get the data for december 2020 right so how we get the data for 2020 we know how the date truncate work. So basically here we are providing the record date and we are saying truncate it at the month level. What it will do is it will convert the, la the date part of each and every date as one. And we will find which all user uh, are there who has the activity in December 2020, right? So let's uh, do the select over here. So here, if you see, for each and every user, we have the activities uh, in the December 2020. So here, if you see, uh, we had three uh, users in account, sorry, four users in account ID one, but only three has the activity in December 2020, right? One, two, and eight, right? There was three also, but uh, that user doesn't have any activity in December 2020, right? Same way for others and uh, let's comment this or remove this and uh, find for january 2020 so here this we can replace it by this and run this okay so now we can see uh, activities for each user uh, in uh, january 2021 now we have the activities of both the years or both the month data and the latest activity. Now it's simple. We just need to join these two, uh, these two table that is uh, December 2020 activity and latest activity. And uh, similarly, uh, January 2020 activity and the latest activity and uh, find the final output, right? So our next step is December retainer percentage. So we saw, right, we need to find the percentage. How we can find the percentages, we need to join these two tables uh, latest activity and uh, December 2020 activities on account ID and user ID and we need to find the data at the account level so we are grouping the data at the account ID level and we are saying what we are saying is uh, we are finding basically the count that will give us the percentage that will help us in finding the percentage and what exactly here we are saying is we are saying latest activity should be greater than um, December 31st December 2020 right if the user has the activity after this point then we can say that the user is retained right and we are doing the sum out of it so uh, this will give us the sum and then this is the count so this will help us getting the uh, getting the percentage basically so let's see this december retention percentage data okay there is some issue Okay, this we need to remove. Okay, now if you see, there were three uh, users under account A1 and the retention uh, for December is uh, 0.6s. Why? Because I think two users were only there uh, who had the activity uh, after December 31st. And similarly for A2 and A3. Same way we will find for uh, January, right? 
so this is the january data same code right we just need to change this condition that is after january 31st and let's run this okay same result right uh, here i think there it was 0 0.5 and here it is one so two total two users were there but only one user has the uh, sorry uh, two user had the uh, total number of user were two but retention rate is one because uh, i think all both of the user were had the activity after uh, january 31st so two divided by two one right so now we got i think these two tables uh, this one and this one we just need to join these two tables and find this ratio right so let's remove this okay so in final uh, steps what we are doing is we are taking these two tables joining on the account id uh, because we have only this right and we don't need this count uh, i was just uh, printing this uh, so that we can understand it properly so we can remove this So on account ID of table one and account ID of table two. So this is joined and we will find the ratio between these two. So this will give us the ratio. Okay, now we on our final output. Okay, so here if you see, we are doing uh, this retained January divided by retained December. Um, and this can lead to a divide by zero issue so we can use the case when statement to check this value should be uh, greater than uh, zero before the division operation so let's write that case when uh, this t2 december is greater than zero then only perform this otherwise zero and right Let's run this. Okay, we got our output. Same old. So, yes, if you like this content, please do like, subscribe, share the channel. Let's meet in the next problem.